parts have finally arrived for my crash damage 2017 Volkswagen Golf R. Which means we can finally start working on the interior of the car because as you can see, there's a lot of stuff wrong with it. Theoretically, this pallet right here should have all the parts to pretty much complete the rest of the Volkswagen Golf R. But before we start taking apart the entire interior, we need to put together the seat belts, which I had repaired by Safety Restore, which is a pretty cool company. It's been a couple of weeks since I've made a video rebuilding my Volkswagen Golf R. Unfortunately, the parts I ordered were delayed, which is out of my control, but eventually they did arrive and that's all that really matters. Right in between those two cars. In the last episode, I was able to remove the seats from the car, as well as the seat belts, which I quickly learned are a three-stage system and are a lot harder to remove than a non-European car. And lastly, I was able to remove the SRS module, which controls all the airbags. But with the parts finally in, it's time to get to work. If installing these seatbelts go well, then we're gonna try tackling this headliner here because as you can see, there are quite a few wrinkles. Well, you can't, you're gonna have to just take my word for it, but we're also gonna have to replace the curtain airbags because two of them deployed. Hopefully you can see the wrinkles now. So instead of replacing the seatbelts with new ones, which would cost upwards of $1,000 on this car, I decided to send them off to Safety Restore to have them rebuild the seatbelts and reset the SRS module, which you guys saw in the last video. As you guys can see, they seem to have done a pretty good job because it's no longer a six foot strand of seatbelt and it's all seemingly put back together. Now, before we start the install, I was able to get some exclusive behind the scenes footage from Safety Restore and how the process works. When the deployed seatbelts arrive at their facility, they immediately begin to deconstruct the belts and fix them with OEM parts. Unfortunately, the full process is a trade secret, but I'm glad I was able to get at least some footage. What's also cool is Safety Restore can change the colors and stitching of the belts to whatever you like, which is super cool. And with their fast turnaround, it took less than a week for my belts to arrive. So make sure to check them out in the description of today's video. Now, to finally install these seatbelts back into the car, I first need to disconnect the battery, as I don't want to accidentally detonate the charges that were just replaced in the seatbelt while I install them in the car. Getting the trim out of the way reveals where the seatbelts need to be mounted. I made sure to plug back in the detonator switches into the correct spot by matching the colors with each other. Then it was time to string the seatbelt up and through the mounting points and through the trim using the bolts that I left in to make sure I didn't misplace them. While also making sure to bolt down all the guides correctly. Then it was time to reattach the seatbelt to the pretensioner using the clip, which was quite tricky, but I managed to get it done. Then I bolted the pretensioner onto the carpet, plugged everything back in, and reclipped the wiring harness. The last step was cutting the zip tie that prevents the seatbelt from tightening back up while you try to install it. And with the seatbelt officially installed, I could finally put all the trim back in place. So it is a new day and we are going to switch things up a little bit. Unfortunately, the passenger seatbelt kind of locked up during shipping. So I've sent that back out to Safety Restore to hopefully fix it and then send it out to me. That should come in a day or two, luckily, and we'll put that in. But for the time being, the driver's uh, seatbelt installed perfectly. Everything works great with that. But because of this little hiccup that we have, we're going to move on to trying to take out this headliner here. As finally, I have the uh, curtain airbags, both sides so I can install those and not only that but we can try to get these creases out of the headliner. Fortunately it's black so I think it'll be pretty easy but let's try to give it a whirl.
So the first step to removing the headliner was putting the seats back into the car, and you'll see why this is important later in the video. Starting with the center trim, I used a plastic pry tool to help pop out some of the pieces, and this gave me access to the connectors, which I unplugged, and also the screws, which held the center trim to the headliner itself. Then it was time to begin working on the grab handles. If you've never removed these handles before, then I truly wish you luck because these were the biggest pain in the butt ever. First, you need to remove the plastic caps, which give you access to the clips holding the handles into the roof. Using a very small flathead screwdriver, I was able to unclip each side and eventually remove the entire handle. Keep in mind, this is sped up, but it took me over an hour off camera to figure this out. Once I saw the clip from the outside, I was able to figure out how to do it, and it made the process much easier removing the other three. So it's gonna be a little too difficult to show you with one hand, but basically these are the clips, and you can see there are these little bars here, and the point of these bars is in the actual car itself, you can see there are those metal brackets right there, and these barbs kind of go over the metal bracket which locks in place into the metal stopping this from coming out so you take this little screwdriver and you have to pry the clip out from the inside turn it and then you can pry the other one out and turn it again and it pops out but it's finicky it's not difficult per se but it's not easy it's just tedious because you have to keep trying over and over and over and over again and eventually it gives and you can pull the handle out. Alrighty, update for anybody trying to remove the handles, to remove the headliner, maybe you're trying to put you know, stars in the ceiling or whatever. In order to remove this, because what took me 30 minutes to do one, I just did the last two in five minutes, not even. What you have to do is instead of turning it, like I said before, you kind of want to put it inside of it and get behind the clip and then just push as far in as you can and instead of turning it 90, you're doing the same thing, but it's harder. All you're doing is pulling out. And you hear the clip motion? Once it's in, you pull up. And that pulls the clip down, and it is so much easier. And then it pops right out. You just have to put tension on it, put this in, use a light for the first one, the easy one. You pull up like this, the opposite way. That unlocks the clip. You pull it and you're good to go. And I took these off super quick. Hopefully that makes sense to you guys. Moving on to the sun visors, these use the same clips as the handles. I had to remove the A pillar in order to access the top of the headliner, which was hiding the disconnect clip that held the sun visor on. Alrighty, so I couldn't really find any tutorials on how to remove this. So I'm kind of just playing with it. And they're kind of similar, similar clips where you, if you bend it with a screwdriver, these clips in here, you can shimmy them and get it kind of free. And the, the clips kind of face different ways. So this is horizontal and then this clip is diagonal, but it's all the way inside. So with a flathead screwdriver, you can get in this and kind of shimmy it. So check it out. No special tools really required here. Oh, there we go. And just like that, we're out. But there's a wire here. So this wire doesn't disconnect here, which is kind of a pain in the butt. So what you have to do is if you're dropping this whole headliner, then take this off first because it will allow you to pull this down. Otherwise, you'd have to pull this wire through, kind of like I'm doing a little bit, but it's kind of tight. So ideally, there's some velvet tape, like some foam tape holding it from the other side. But I'm gonna pull it through. Right here, there's the disconnect. And then, voila, I'm taking it out. All right, it's the moment of truth. I have probably two or three more screws that's gotta come out, and then I'm pretty sure the whole headliner is going to drop off. Now, in order to do that, we have to take this rear boot open. I have to open it up. I did clean it out earlier today uh, in preparation for you guys to see it, but I know nobody on YouTube has seen this coming up. So this is like a moment in history. Write it down. Da 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 da. Opening the rear boot up. Opens up good. Inside you'll see shortly. 
more in it, but um, a few clips have to come out here and here, and on the this these panels on the sides both have to come out, and then the whole headliner should drop out, and we'll pull it out, and we'll be good to go. So the last few steps involve removing this top trim piece, which is just held in by clips, and then removing the screw that holds the side trim to the car. With those out of the way, it gives me enough room to slide the top plastic trim out of the car freeing up the headliner. And I did the same on the other side, and I also removed the two pieces of trim that were on the inner pillars. All right, so the last step is removing two clips, one here and one here. This holds the entire thing up as we've gotten everything else out. They are the same clips that were in the sun visor, and I think even in the handles too. So at this point, I'm pretty, pretty confident I've messed around with them enough to, to know how to get them out, but we'll see. Yep, one out. Last one. So you have to apply pressure down. That's the only way it's going to stay open and not clip itself back in. Oh. Is that holding something? Oh, no way. We got to take these two out. As well. <laughs> With a little help from my friend Sean, we were able to carefully remove the headliner from out of the car. What's the hidden stuff on? I'm not sure, actually. Uh, the airbag. Oh, oh, I see. Hold on. Yeah. With the headliner finally free from the car, it was time to replace the deployed curtain airbags with new ones. Now, of course, Volkswagen had to use the same stupid clips for these two. Like, of course, why, why make it any easier? But besides the, the clips needing to come out, I also needed to disconnect the detonator switch, which is in orange, as well as just one screw mounting the airbag to the car. Then you just slide it back and out free it comes. With that out of the way, just repeat it backwards when installing the new one and also do the same on the other side of the car. So guys, the headliner is officially out of the car. It's about time. Those clips were such a pain in the butt. So for anybody that's doing that, hopefully that little tutorial helps. There are a few little creases on here, but honestly, I don't think it's worth replacing this at this point. I'm gonna try uh, in a little bit to use a steamer and steam it up. The uh, curtain airbags have officially been replaced in the car, as you guys saw. So everything is looking good, but we're getting close to the end of today's episode. You guys can see we have the uh, brand new, beautiful uh, curtain airbags installed and good to go. The last we're waiting for, which should be any second now, is the seat belt to arrive in the mail. We'll install that and we'll call it a wrap for this week. Alrighty guys, time for a quick build cost update. So far we've added the seatbelt and SRS module. Well, we'll install the next one soon, but we also have the left and right curtain airbags that we got installed, which brings our new total to $17,677.25. In total, both airbags were a little over $600 used off LKQ, and the seat belts were sent off to Safety Restore, as you guys know. All right, it is a new day, and we are gonna try to get the creases out of the headliner. I've researched a few different ways to go around doing this. The first is using a steamer, which we'll try. If that doesn't work, uh, or if it does work, I also have a dental pick to slightly pull up the fabric, and that should really 
hide most of the creases. So fingers crossed this works, but fixing this up or making it nicer beats buying a new one for like a thousand dollars at Volkswagen. So if you're like me and watch other car rebuild YouTubers, every time they remove a wrinkled headliner from the car, they end up buying a new one as they can't get the wrinkles out. I was a bit skeptical about the steamer actually working. The thing is buying a new one just isn't an option for me as Volkswagen wants a little over $800 for a new one. Can you believe that? After doing a ton of research, the steamer seemed to be the best option for repair. I used the microfiber towel to act as a barrier between the steam and the fabric just as a precaution. And I also use distilled water as tap water has minerals in it and things that could potentially stain the fabric. I just wanna err on the safe side. Now I don't have a technique to doing this, so I just went back and forth over the headliner, pushing up from behind it in where the creases were, and I actually started to notice a difference. I also wanna give a huge shout out to my neighbor for letting me borrow his steamer. All right, so I am in complete disbelief how easy that was. I've watched so many videos of people either throwing out their old headliner, not being able to get the creases out, or just being stuck and putting it back in with damaged headliners. This solution worked and it is absolutely incredible. I'm blown away how easy the install was. I just wanna show you what exactly I used. It is a power steamer specifically used for wallpaper removal. I guess it works, if it works, it works. and. Every single crease is completely out of the headliner. You gotta see this. I seriously had my doubts about this working, but I mean, check this out. It's as if it's brand new. I guess the steam heats up the, uh, the felt material or whatever this is, contracts it or constricts it, constricts it and pulls the creases out of the headliner. Who knew? I mean, in theory, it sounded like it would work, but I didn't think it would actually come out as good as it did. I'll do a few more passes with the steamer, but we're talking a literal night and day difference. This thing is brand new, and we're talking about like over $1,000 in savings. And right on time, the second seatbelt from Safety Restore delivered, and it is working and fixed. So let's get this installed into the car and call it a day. So just in the nick of time, the passenger seatbelt arrived and it works perfectly. Shout out to Safety Restore. Let's get that installed really quick. Now, since you've already seen me do this on the other side of the car, I'd like to take the time to thank you guys for supporting me through this build and commenting on all my videos. As without it, I don't know if I'd still be doing it. Now, for those new to the channel, I have never done anything like this before in my life. So every step along the way is completely new to me. So hopefully these videos inspire you to try new things and challenge yourself as I'm trying to do here. And if you have a similar car as me, then hopefully this has helped you work on yours. that is a wrap for today's episode. As you can tell, we have completely repaired the creases out of the headliner. It's as if we bought it brand new. Not only that, but we were also able to knock out, if you can see in here, both seat belts have been repaired successfully, reinstalled into the car, headliner was taken out, and we have officially replaced all the curtain airbags with new ones. So, if you're liking this content, then definitely make sure to smash the like button, turn on post notifications, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace. This, this whole car doesn't pass safety regulations. So we're gonna, we're gonna have to scratch the whole project. Pull me closer.